Yo, what's good YouTube? It's your boy Mitchell J back with another video. And today we've got Matisse Thibel shares that he knew he was going to the 76ers long before the draft. Now, I'm a big fan of Matisse Thibel. He is from Australia, so that's what's up. But let's get into the video. You mentioned the draft, and I want to kind of talk about sort of leading up to the draft and mm. draft night. But um, I think the first time we ever met, like we talked about this, but like you and I were supposed to play together. Yeah. Mm. Like yeah. You kind of had like – because we lost to Toronto. They wanted to get bigger on the wing. Mm -hmm. I think Philly, like they made enough of an offer that, you know, they, they wanted to bring me back. Mm -hmm. And I think they indicated you like, oh, yeah, JJ's going to be back. I know they, they told Al that. They yeah. told Al I was coming. Yeah. Al thought he was going to play with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what, 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 talk about that just pre-draft process and, and they kind of zeroed in on you. It was a little bit of a telegraph. When did you sort of know, like, I'm going to Philly? Oh. This is, I feel like enough time has passed. <laughs> I knew for a long time. Not, not like that long, but like I knew for over a month before the draft Dang. exactly where I was going. And Philly That's had, tough. there was, oh, what can I say? Um, <laughs> I can get anybody <laughs> trouble, I don't think. It's not tampering. <laughs> I do the draft. Well, right? I'll just say this. We had, we had Michael Porter on last week, and he specifically was like, the Clippers doctor said I'll never play in the NBA. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, that's why yeah. so it's like, no, it's just fine. It's like. Yeah, it was. So I get done with my college season. I start mm -hmm. training. Um, and it's starting to get to the time where, like, workouts are starting with teams. Oh, yeah. And Philly had apparently been interested in me since, like, my junior year of college. And I was okay. now a senior graduated. And oh, he said so when it years. came time to start working out, my agent comes to me, he's like, so Philly has made a proposition, essentially. Like, they've proposed that they give you, I think, what were you guys, they call it a promise? Mm -hmm. Like, a promise to pick you with their, whatever. I think they're supposed to be, like, the 22nd? 24th. I think. 24th pick. Oh, yeah. that's all right. And I'm like, uh, okay. And at this point, like, I'm just, my, my, my brain's all scrambled about this NBA thing. I've watched mm -hmm. countless guys go, and they just... I feel like they didn't have to do anything. They were uh, like a shoe in like yeah. from Marco Fultz to DeJounte Murray. Mm. Like, these guys, I feel like their path was very different. So when it came oh, to yeah, my turn, sure. I was like, well, just I mean, I don't, up I've never heard of this. What is this? And why would I want to take a promise over just betting on myself and see how high I could go? Mm -hmm. um, and I went back and forth with my agent and my dad. And basically they made it clear to me that Philly was a position. There was an opportunity where they wanted and needed my skill set. Oh, yeah. And I think that's something that's not really appreciated by young players coming in because they're like, oh, I'm just trying to be a lottery pick. I'm trying to make all this money. Yeah. But what people don't realize, like, it's so hard to stick. Like, you should take the pay. You get drafted to the wrong the team, day, especially that's coming in. Real money is. Get into a team that's. You could make a little bit of money coming in, but believes in you. people who make standing I mean, I think league for a long period of time. You can see it in how my career. I mean, I've played two years, but it's. I've had a a successful two years because of this opportunity because my skill set isn't necessarily if a team doesn't really want me or believe in me or want to win like I could have fizzled out pretty early mm. your skill set value is is exponentially higher on a team like Philly um, a championship contender yep. a, a team that needs switching defenders lockdown defenders guys that can guard primary scorers uh, I 100% agree and it, I think it's rare actually that y a young player does have that perspective mm as they enter the draft you know most guys are just like i want to go as high as possible yeah you know and even i can because I, I can remember you know my draft like i was looking i didn't know any, a ton about the nba i didn't watch a ton of nba mm -hmm. like in college i was so into like college basketball so like oh. my thing was like all right on the eighth pick i get paid this much and like <laughs> at the time like the difference between the eighth pick and 11th pick was probably only like a million bucks but a million oh, bucks only a million time, dollars was insane amount of money so i'm like oh, i want to yeah. be the eighth pick i want to be the seventh pick whatever it was it was like more important for me then hmm. um but you you look back now and it really is all about situation and being in, yeah. in the right fit yeah and so when when i was able to understand that um we were like yeah let's let's do it we'll take the like mm -hmm. hit Philly back. we'll take the promise um and now it's a matter of keeping a secret yeah. So it's like I think I remember it was like seven weeks until the draft at this point when we agreed to this. <laughs> and it's like okay, damn. So I have seven weeks where I can't tell. Like I didn't tell my sister. Like my dad might have known, but like and and you know how it is. Like 
everyone's asking who you worked out for. Oh yeah, like guys sure. who are in your draft class. Like, hey, did you go work out with so and so, or like, are you coming to the combine? And I'm just over here, just trying to, like, I try to be a truthful person, mm -hmm. but I'm like over here trying to make up lies and be as convincing as possible. Like, oh no, we're waiting for workouts. So, uh, yeah. Wait, so you didn't work out for anybody? So, I worked out for Philly, mm -hmm. but this was. That's a red flag if I've ever heard of a red flag. <laughs> like, like, I didn't work out for nobody. <laughs> no, like nobody. Yeah. But I'm telling people like, no, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Yeah. I worked out for Philly. It was like, a, I was working out with a trainer who was, he lived in Milwaukee at the time. So oh, I was going okay. to Milwaukee to work out at some division three school, middle of nowhere. And <laughs> Philly was, you guys were in a series with, was it, were you guys in a series with Chicago or something or? It was Brooklyn, then Toronto. Brooklyn, or so it was Brooklyn, and they flew into and they flew into Chicago, and then drove to Milwaukee because they didn't want anyone to like be able to tie the strings, whatever. Oh wow! And so they come, so Elton and uh, Mark Eversley, they come to watch me work out, and this is like mm -hmm. this covert operation, like because oh, wow. at yeah. this point nobody knows what's going on, like nobody's supposed to know. Yeah. And well, we someone go, knew. We yeah. go to this little gym at like seven thirty in the morning. They pull up in, like, the, the black Escalade, blacked out windows. Like, I'm shitting bricks. <laughs> like, I'm freaking out. This is, because I, I haven't worked out in front of anybody. I've just been, me and my trainer, all summer. And we get in there. They're, first of all, they're hiding in the gym. Because they don't want, if anyone came in, they didn't want to be seen. Oh, wow. So they're, like, Jesus. in this gym behind a wall, watching, like, around the corner. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, right now. Oh, God. Sure this. <laughs> That's I'm the most really sketchiest thing. Oh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> and so, I mean, yeah, workout. The only thing notable about the workout was I airballed my first shot. And that was, like, <laughs> devastating. But I was able to recover. And it all worked out in the end. But, yeah. Uh, this is, I have a question for both of you about this kind of process. Uh, like, oh, they do all this. You make the promise that it but what is stopping another team who has a, who has a smart scout or a smart GM or whatever mm -hmm. from just being like, oh, Matisse fits. Like, we're just going to pick him. Yeah. yeah that you know was, what I mean? It's not like it's the second pick in the draft. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. It, that was, like, the fear, ultimately. That's why, like, it was so serious that I keep the secret because it gave other teams leverage. And ultimately, I ended up, mm. for those who don't know, getting drafted by Boston because they thought that OKC was just going to risk it. Like, I did all my – I did some medical stuff for Philly, too, as well, before the draft. So, oh, yeah. like, I wasn't – broken and <laughs> okc i think was just going to be like we'll just take our chances and then oh wow philly was like no, no we're not having that so they whatever arranged something with boston so boston drafted me for philly and philly drafted someone for them oh damn and, the and i think i think there was an exchange of picks as well yeah to to compensate boston for yeah taking you earlier and all that stuff. you would have been a good fit in boston too did yeah. you know as that all that stuff was going down on draft night were you privy to that information? Like when Boston pick, I always find it fascinating when a guy gets drafted on draft night and then gets traded five minutes later. Did oh, you yeah. know all that was happening? I didn't know any of that until I was, I actually got invited to the green room, barely. They like, they added two <laughs> half tables so that me and like one other person could be there. Oh, so damn. A tiny picnic table in like the corner of the green room. Oh, no. Else. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, oh, like, hey, Mike. My, my dad, my sister. That was it. Everyone else is like 10, their whole family. Um, no, it's so, like a couple picks before. Like, you know, you see, like, the agents lean over and whisper. You never know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. My agent did that, and I was like, what's going on? And he's like, Boston's going to draft you, and then they're going to trade you. It's all good. Like, stick to it. It's going <laughs> to – the plan is still whatever. I was like, okay. Then the cameras come over, and you know the whole thing. Well, there you go. Well, that's interesting. You sounded a bit sketchy when you were saying that they're looking around the corner and stuff. But, yeah, um, you should have quite a good season this year, actually. But, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Catch you later. Peace.